Hello to everyone. This is Rahim, and this is my LinkedIn ID. This is another video about 5G, and in this video, I'm going to explain about the run based notification area and also run paging procedure for UE in RRC in active state. First of all, we'll see the run area concept. Here we've got an area divided into six cells. Cell 1, cell 2, and cell 3 are controlled by GMB1. Cell 4, cell 5, and cell 6 are controlled by GMB2. The run area is a single group of cells belonging to a single or multiple 5G base stations. In this example, we would like to have two run areas. Run area 1 consists of cell 1, cell 2, and cell 3. Run area 2 consists of cell 4, cell 5, and cell 6. Run area is specified by run area identity, which consists of a tracking area code and optionally a run area code. Here we've got two run area IDs, run area ID 1 and run area ID 2. How a device gets information about the RAN area. RAN area code is broadcasted through System Information Block 1, C1, along with PLM and ID, Tracking Area Code, and Cell Identity. Now, this is time to explain about RNA, RAN Based Notification Area. RNA is an area where UE can move without updating the location information. RNA is provided to the UE when RRC connection is suspended by GMB. I mean sending RRC release with suspend configuration by GMB. After UE receives the RRC with suspend configuration, from the RRC point of view, the UE state is changed from RRC connected to RRC inactive. In the RRC inactive state, all radio connections, I mean the data radio bearers, the signaling radio bearers except SRB0, signaling radio bearer 0, are released and suspended. But the N2 and N3 connections are maintained between the last serving GMB and the 5G core, I mean AMF and the user plane function. So we can say from the 5G core point of view, U is connected, I mean CM connected. RNA consists of either a list of cell IDs, a list of RAN area IDs, or a list of tracking area IDs. In this example, RNA is based on a list of RAN areas. We've got two RAN areas, RAN area 1 and RAN area 2. And RNA consists of RAN area 1 and RAN area 2. Based on the type of services, I mean EMBB, URLC or Massive IoT, RNA having a smaller or larger size can be used. For instance, for the UE with URLC service, RNA with a smaller size, for example, RNA with three cells, can be prepared and it can be sent by GMB to the device. Paging for 5G new radio is done when UE is in either RRC ideal or RRC inactive state. In this example, I'm focusing on run paging procedure when UE is RRC inactive. Here you can see UE is served by the cell 2 of GMB1. For instance, UE has already conducted the service request. Therefore, there is an RRC connection between UE and GMB1, and there is a NAS signal connection between UE and AMF, and also a PDU session between UE and user plane function, UPF. In this case, 
From the 5G core point of view, the UE is CM connected, and from the RRC point of view, the UE is RRC connected. So, UE can be scheduled by GMB1 to send and receive user plane data and signaling to from the 5G network. UE inactivity in the uplink and downlink direction can be checked by GMB with a timer, I mean inactivity timer. Inactivity timer, for example, can be set to 10 seconds. Due to UE inactivity, the RRC connection is released with suspend configuration by GMB1 and then the RNA is provided to the UE. Then the RRC state is changed from the RRC connected to the RRC inactive in UE. Here you can see UE moves from the cell 2 of GMB1 to the cell 3 of GMB1 and from there to the cell 5 of GMB2 and then to the cell 6 of GMB2 which is not under the control of the last serving GMB. As the UE moves inside the cells of RNA, it can perform cell reselection without informing the network and in this case there is no need to update the location information, I mean RNA update. When UE is in the cell 6 of GMB2, the user plane data is arrived at UPF. You can see here. Since from the core point of view, the U is connected, therefore the downlink data is sent to the last serving GMB, which is GMB1. So, the downlink data is sent from UPF to the GMB1. GMB1, as the last serving GMB, knows that the UE is in the RRC inactive state and need to be paid in all of the cells within the RNA. GMB1 then initiate run-based paging procedure within the GMBs of the RNA. In this example, the run paging message is sent just to the GMB2. The prepaid run paging message is sent to the GMB2 via XN interface. The RRC paging message is prepaid by GMB1 and GMB2 and then the message prepaid by two GMBs is sent to all the cells within the RNA based on the UE DRX cycle. As the UE is in the cell 6 of GMB2, the RRC resume request in response to paging message is sent to the GMB2. GMB2 checks the IRNTI, the UE identity, in the RRC resume request message and finds the last serving GMB by to retrieve the UE context. XN retrieve UE context request is sent and then GMB1 as a last serving GMB sends back the response to the GMB2. GMB2 prepare the RRC resume message and then sends it to the UE. From this point, RRC state is changed from RRC inactive to RRC connected in the device. In response to RRC resume, the RRC complete message is sent by UE to the GMB2. At this point, GMB2 can send the address information of XNU, I mean uplink GPRS tunnel endpoint ID, to inform the GMB1 to forward the downlink date if there is a in the buffer. In this example, the downlink data from the GMB1 is forwarded to GMB2 and from there to the device. In this step, GMB2 as the new serving GMB 
sends a request to the AMF to change the path in the downlink direction. So, path switch request is sent and then AMF sends back the response to the GMB2. GMB2 then sends a request to delete the UE context in GMB1 and at this point, downlink data is sent directly by UPF to the GMB2 and from there to the UE. Thank you for being with me in this video. You can also refer to my page in LinkedIn to see more posts related to the 5G system.